We just finished watching Soul Leveling Episode 5 and Mr. Otaku Spirit got us some interesting, interesting changes from the manhua. Let's see what he has to say. Another episode of Soul Leveling and yet another bad spot to leave it at. <laughs> I just think the, the- Well, it's like, what? Do you want to fight the spider and then just have to fight? I, I don't know. I, I feel like it was a setup episode and I understand. Cliffhangers do kind of generate hype and I think it was an okay part. I don't think that it was just like a, a jarring moment to end it off. I think we left off at this like, you know, this moment where we're being tr betrayed and, and the other Hwang Dong Suk's party is just basically just like trapping us so that we can die and they can take all the loot, right? But I feel like it's perfectly fine and next episode's gonna be fucking insane. The creators behind this are just thinking these are some really good cliffhangers and they're not. They just feel like so unsatisfying it's all right. but kind of leads me to believe that episode like i wonder what he wanted different as a cliffhanger here right like did you want like the fight with the spider to be over i guess that's one way of doing it and then next episode we would have been the the confrontation with huang dong suk's party afterwards right six or so leveling might be a really 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 good episode but we'll have to wait for that because again stopping point is here but no, episode five was solid. I, I think overall, looking at the manga, it looks like they cover things pretty well. For some reason, they decided to put Song as the person telling Song about people betraying you mm. in a dungeon. At least based on the manga, uh, manhwa, it, it's somebody else. Well, technically, um, the betraying, well, mis did Mr. Song betray us? Maybe I'm under misunderstanding, but Mr. Song didn't really betray us, right? Mr. Kim kind of did. Somebody else is telling Song about people. Oh, I see, I see. On this bench, someone else is telling him about, like, there's scammers and crooked people in the dungeons. Okay. Well, essentially killing other people inside of a dungeon or betraying them and leaving them for dead for okay. their own gain. But that's fine. I like Song. <laughs> I, based on the previous moments of Song, I, I do like the guy, so I'll take that, but... Yeah, let's just jump right into it. Opening up with Sung basically becoming very fit and it getting the attention of all the nurses. <laughs> it had to be that. It had to do the whole thing where the girl's like, can I get your contact info? And he's like... <laughs> he didn't even know. He's so fucking dense. He's like, oh, do they want to like, give me my test result? Which honestly, I think it makes sense why he's dense because he's never gotten this kind of like fawn. Like women have never fawned over him before. That's a cap actually. Jew, he always fawns over him. But I'm saying in a grand scheme, like girls don't just simp for him out of nowhere except Juhi, right? So I think it makes sense why he's a little bit dense here. Oh, you must want to send me the exam information. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, really, dude? Yeah. Really? Even his sister taking note of it, uh, her noticing that- Yeah, this is like, yo, you just grew like a foot. Your entire facial structure has changed. The bone structure has fundamentally changed. You got six pack abs. Did something happen, Brick Bro? What you been eating recently? He's not only gotten fit and ripped, but also taller. taller. Which that's kind of interesting. Again, it kind of plays into the idea of him leveling up and getting stronger. There was one interesting kind of change they made with the anime and the idea that he does note that, yes, it seems like as my stats are going up, it seems like I'm getting more fit and more muscular. Mm, mm. And he's in the end. I guess the strength kind of does that, right? So if you put it into intellect, what, well, you become a little bit more smarter? I don't know. I mean, it kind of makes it out like, man, maybe I'll get like into becoming a bodybuilder. <laughs> but in the manhwa, he's like literally, no, I don't want to become that. <laughs> like it shows this image of him like all like beefed up and like massive. Oh, he doesn't want to become a bodybuilder in the manhwa, but in the anime, they're like bodybuilder. The muscles and he's like. No, I don't want that. Please don't do that. <laughs> Maybe that's... It kind of plays into the idea of him going, hmm, I don't really want to max out my strength anymore. Maybe I should stop with the strength Agility. Part. Uh, but yeah, it's technically... I think we have enough of a foundation for the strength because obviously you need some baseline strength to fight people. But right now, I think we're at a good point and he's like investing into a little bit more agility now, right? Getting into the aspect of him wanting to sort of create balance with himself. Putting in the idea that it's no point in me being really, really strong and being able to one-shot things. If you can't hit it, and I believe agility comes into that. And Annie, you said agility stat specifically involves mental acuity. You would think that agility makes you more nimble, but it's like, no, in this game, in this show, in this series, strength kind of does that. Strength is basically what you expect naturally agility from other games to do to make you faster. Strength improves your physical prowess in all departments, so it all recovers that. Agility is like mental awareness, perceiving things to come at you a little bit slower because you're, I don't know, you're just more agile. That, that's like the logic that Annie News gave. Things if I can't hit it. So I do need more agility. It does kind of get a little bit more into the idea of what each one of these stats are kind of doing. He puts a lot of emphasis in the idea that it seems like perception is much more useful than he thought it would be. Again, technically in the previous episode, we've seen that he noticed that you know there was this boss over here so it gave him some sort of input right and, and like in today's episode too all the fucking uh the ant does the, the the what was that grasshoppers coming down the red grasshoppers like he detected it before anyone else and even before that going to the dungeon he just kind of did a quick check on the Huang Dong Suk's party he was like oh like 
like a couple C ranks and a couple D ranks or some shit, right? Based on the aura that was like emanating. So interesting how perception can be useful in so many different ways. And there's an indication in this episode with him noticing the insects that, yes, he was able to tell where the enemy was coming from. And yes, there was a lot of them. So it does seem like perception is really useful for him. Mm -hmm. But yes, in the end, he sort of decides on agility being something that can make him faster, able to kind of hit better and all that kind of stuff. Additionally, hitting on intellect as possibly being the one that... He so he kind of neglects on intellect because it's like you would think that intellect's used for magic, but we're not really any class yet. There is no class that we've specialized into, right? We're still just like this random tutorial adventure in Maple Story without having gone to like a class specification. What I think he'll do is probably some kind of like assassin thief type, right? Based on the weapons that he's using, it just makes kind of sense that he would assume that kind of role. So intellect, huh? Wonder when intellect will come into play. He doesn't really want the most because he doesn't know that he can use magic or he doesn't think that he can use magic. And we have no indication if he can yeah. ever learn magic. Not yet. Um, or if it could possibly affect something else. I'll be I'll be curious about that. If intellect could possibly be something makes him smarter, just like be able to like make the like decision making skills at a fast pace. I don't know. More than just magic. Because that's the assumption coming into this. It's magic. It's mana pull typically mm -hmm. with a lot of games. Mm -hmm. It's the spells that you can use. So we'll see. I, I, I kind of speculated in the previous episode. I wonder if it'll be something that he'll learn magic through killing certain, certain mobs. Or maybe it'll be a reward for one of the you know daily quests that he's doing. Something like that. Speaking of daily quests, he, he said that he was going to do his running again later. I'm curious if because he went off and did this job, if he's going to come out of the job and then go, crap, I forgot, and then get the penalty. And it be Even more interesting. What if we get the penalty while in this dungeon, right? Because I've been saying since the moment they introduced the concept of using a teleportation stone to get out of the dungeon, but also there's another mechanic. You fail the daily limit time, you get sent into the fucking sand desert. What happens if we do that while fighting the spider? Would we just get out? Would Jinho just get fucked then, I guess? Maybe something really crazy that he can maybe this time actually accomplish, whereas before it was just literally survive, run. Yeah. Which might, he might actually do a lot better this time around. But no, it was interesting in the, the manhwa, it kind of shows like a diet. It'd be funny if we actually can kill the centipedes now. Like the huge red centipedes, right? And then we just kill them and there's no more mobs. So our punishment is like, we're just chilling in the desert for like four hours. Graham of how each one of them sort of play into each other. Like strength and agility kind of accent each other. Perception and um, I think strength or something like that. Uh, intellect wasn't connecting to agility, but it was connecting to perception. And again, I can kind of see that with the idea of, again, intellect not just being about casting spells. So I guess he's kind of talking about synchronizing uh, stats, right? Like strength and dexterity, right? Like how, how strength and agility might synchronize together, intellect and perception might like, per uh, synchronize together. Well, it could be strictly about, okay. again, more knowledge of the bosses and the mobs themselves and how it all works together would play into perception. The idea of you would know exactly what you're hearing or what you're sensing. Again, they could technically play into each other, which would be interesting. Now, the next part's very interesting because it gets into, obviously, he gets a, this is another funny kind of change. In the, in the manhwa, it sort of gives this indication that the person that calls Sung, the, <laughs> the landlord, mm. is really mad. <laughs> really? In the anime, they're so nice. It's like, oh, you, you can't make your rent this month? Ah, well, we can wait for you. He was such a nice landlord. <laughs> like, he's like, yeah, sorry I was in the hospital. Yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> it kind of like <laughs> made like, out wow. like this landlord was mad. But in the anime, it sort of gave the indication that he knows so the nice. landlord. Or maybe the landlord is a part of maybe the guild itself and the hunters association and maybe they help the hunters out because he has a really nice apartment like that apartment is that's what i'm saying how the fuck did he afford this apartment as an e-rank hunter there's no shot he can pay for this his mom is a hospital dad's fucking gone for to get a pack of cigarettes sister's at school like what huge and he's paying for it maybe government support for mom being the hospital i don't fucking know uh again it might be something where they maybe they get some help from the hunter's guild because i was indicating that with the idea of his mother being look at this uh, shit look at this I was curious if possibly the hospital is helping him more than they would typically help other people because he's a hunter. That would explain why he has a massive... Like a social security net is the only way you can justify Sung Jin Mu having a luxury apartment like this. Apartment? Just for his self that's yep. barely scraping by? Yeah. <laughs> because again, the, the, the sister ain't working. Bro couldn't even fucking buy a new pair of shoes, bro. He's so broke. No shot he can afford rent here. Again? Uh, so yeah, it kind of gave this indication that the, the landlord was angry, but he was okay with it. Like he was going to put it off because he was hospitalized. Um, I don't know if that's a Japan thing where if you indicate that you've been in a hospital or something like that, they have to kind of help you out. 
but yeah, he's like, I'll, I'll help it out. I'll, I'll get you covered. But that gets into Song essentially trying to debate how he's going to handle going forward. And I said something I was really kind of curious about if he would end up going and getting reevaluated to see if he's stronger, higher rank, and thus get higher jobs. Mm. Because yes, right now he's kind of limited to where he can go. More so in the idea that people are just people aren't going to hire you it, unless you meet the quota, and we can use this as a sacrifice. E ranks, there's so many of them. Like yeah. he indicates here, there's a lot of them, and that more on the manhwa, it kind of indicates more in the idea of there's so many E ranks, there's so many low level adventurers or <laughs> low rank uh, hunters. Feels bad that getting a job, getting into the guild itself, getting anything is hard because there's so many of them. There's so many weak people that th the the availability is not there. It was interesting in the in the anime. I was pausing as he was sc scrolling through the jobs. One of them indicated they were looking for somebody that can control demons. That was what demon control. I do see that to those who who manipulate demons. Monthly salary two hundred thousand one. Huh. It was weird. <laughs> there was like one that was like a uh, scary stuff. One that was like you know, come out and kill with us. Come on, get break some sweats or whatever. But one of them specifically said, "We need somebody that can manipulate demons, control them." That's odd. I, I I'd be curious if maybe there is people out there that are hunters that have the ability to control demons of some sort. And what is a demon compared to a monster in a dungeon? Yeah, what is, is a it demon? controlling the monsters in the dungeon that are calling them demons, or is it? Like a summer or something like that. That would be really know. cool to kind of see what that is about. A demon is a different type of monster or just a completely different species that's not considered a monster? I don't know. I'm, I'm sure over time we'll get to see different hunters and their different abilities. I mean, we got in the basic ones like tanks, healers, and DPS, but it'd be cool to see. And mages. It'd so be cool to kind of see what other ones they have. It was interesting that when he thinks of the idea of actually going to get reevaluated, he says, no, I shouldn't do that. You never know. What if the government's like, yo, this kid's different. He can fucking level. What is this kid? They fucking lock us up in a scientific research room. I don't want that. I don't I don't want that at all. I want to lay low. Which, yes, makes sense. Again, if he does come out there and they find out, oh, my gosh, this dude is like this level now. We just evaluated him back here. The word would get out fast. He kind of notes the idea that, yes, people like to gossip. And yes, they kind of show that whole scene with um, with Bake where he was in the, you know, interviewing and all that kind of stuff. The, the world itself loves these are these are their heroes, basically. They're like idols, pretty much. Just like they do this a lot in Korea, a lot of celebrities, a lot of idols, right? A lot of like movie actors. They they put them on different talk shows and they have like game shows and stuff. It's really fun how they're kind of doing that with the hunters here. So they love talking about the different hunters and what they're able yeah. to do. And yes, somebody that is a hunter that is able to get stronger. Mm -hmm. without you know reawakening it's kind of a huge deal he gets stronger that's that's huge that's would be broken huge news and so it does kind of he does kind of point out the idea that based on both the anime and the manhwa that it's twofold it's one aspect of like yes i don't really know if i can take that attention i need it and additionally i need to make sure that this is what it is first so it's kind of a preparing myself but at the same time not just jumping out there and people scrutinizing him and find out that it's not really what he thinks it is and if he can even handle that press so I kind of see where he's coming from there. Definitely something I would probably do myself. Like, that, that's, can I take that right now? <laughs> Maybe I should make sure that I can actually handle all this stuff before that attention hits me. But yeah, he gets a job, goes out there, meets Dong Suk Huang. And Huang of Dong course, Suk. our boy that's been hinted at for a while, the new adventurer or new hunter. I keep saying adventurer. The new hunter, Jin Ho Wu. I love him. Which... <laughs> Jinho is like just decked out. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, it's fucking pay to win gear, right? He's like a pretty weak guy, but he's got all the gear that makes up for it. And yes, he is a rich kid. Yes, he's spoiled, but he has a good heart. And I don't think he's like a Draco Malfoy where he goes, oh, my father will hear about this. No, he's a great kid. I like he's him. Some kid of some rich father and going to my first raid. So dad got me a bunch of yeah, equipment. Yeah, daddy's Everybody's credit card. He's got this nice polished armor and everything like that. It kind of shows that aspect of, uh, yes. Lower rank people can get stronger through good equipment, and it's that yes, you can kind of like you won't change the rank, but basically you can kind of make up for different lack of departments. And even if you're just like a, a D rank or a C rank, right? It's they're not all the same strength. There's kind of like a range, right? There's got to be like a spectrum of like a C rank. So I'm sure if you have the gear, it, it'll be a little bit better for you. That cycle of dungeon crawling, getting better equipment, making yourself stronger through equipment itself. 
but it kind of shows that little that that jump that you can get if you have the right the right yeah. parents. Money, baby. Um, it Nepotism. Kind of in the manhwa, this idea of like this corporate kid. This is my hobby. Adventure hunting is my hobby. When they're all rich, sitting on a throne, it was pretty good. But yeah, so far Jin Ho is okay. He's I, he definitely jumped up a lot in my in my rankings as like characters in this show, mm-hmm. just based off that later part where they where he says, "I will protect you, big bro." He's like obviously Sung Jin is gonna be fun, but Jin Ho still is like, nah, I'm gonna protect you. Like he's got a good heart. I'm really good at legal stuff. Let me look at your contract. Oh, the contract stuff yeah, too. You need to yeah, this with him too. The lawyer stuff. <laughs> it was good. Now here's the interesting thing. They go into the dungeon, and of course at the door they kind of indicate this idea that the way they tell what a dungeon is gonna be is based on the the amount of mana that's coming out of the gate. And yes, yeah. the size of the gut. Gu- the size doesn't matter in this department, right? Size of the gate doesn't matter. It's the the power, the magic force, the mana, whatever this is that's emanating from the gate that determines like the strength of a gate, yes, right? This thing's huge, and they're kind of leery about it, but it's all based on the magic coming out of it. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of interesting, the kind of thing to know, because I always thought it was like they sent scouts in there, and they would check the monsters, and they would come back out and say, <laughs> this is what the dungeon. It makes more sense. <laughs> I would hate to have that job because you're basically used as a fucking lab rat. What if there's something crazy in there? You don't even know. So somebody would just come there, read the the numbers, and then go, oh, that's this. And yes, it also plays in the idea of missing double dungeons. <laughs> um, it, all, it all kind of plays together in the idea of how they analyze it. But it was interesting that when they go in the dungeon itself, this is a really curious difference here. When I was watching the anime, I watched the anime first, and then I checked mm-hmm. the manhwa. When I was watching the anime... I was getting the sense that Sung the entire time was feeling that something was off. Yes. yes. It was a quota. Something about the quota. Something about missing a healer. Something is off here. Where is the regular quota members? Why are you hiring a new people? Hmm. Something is different, right? An indication that, yes, these guys are, you know, they're really good at fighting with each other. You know, fighting side by side. Yeah. They don't have a healer, which Perfect seems really team. odd. But they're, they're doing it. Like, they're, they're really coordinated. And yes, you have this tank guy that's really skilled. He's got even has a taunt ability, which is crazy. Taunt's pretty OP. They're all doing a good job, but there was something that was eating at Sung the entire time. Something's off. Something's gonna go bad. Just keep keep your eye out. He was, he was telling Jin Ho, "Be careful. Something's coming up." Anime was making me believe that he was sensing something elsewhere. Like we're gonna get to a boss. Something is not adding up. They're showing the monster. The monster's all beat up. Something's not right. So I was getting this indication that they're gonna run into a really nasty boss. Hmm. What I, because I, we just finished watching the episode like an hour ago, and the feeling that I got from Sung Jin Moo saying something's off, didn't he start to say that when Huang Dong Suk's face started to look all shady and dark? I thought that this was kind of all projected towards them, but maybe it was t- projected towards something else. That was just my intuition, though. I felt like Sung Jin Moo was specifically talking about the shadiness of this, like, quota, the shadiness of how they don't need a healer anymore and the, how they're fluid they are as a team and so coherent. Like, something is off here. In the manhwa, the entire dungeon route is constantly harping on these guys are bad. Okay. <laughs> these other guys that we're party up with are bad. So I thought that was... I actually Maybe the anime intentionally tried to make it such that it wasn't so overtly, oh, yo, these guys are bad, these guys are bad, so that we can kind of get like a, a better twist. Like at that moment when they betray us, it's like, what? I would have never seen that coming, you know? I like the anime more because my attention was to what's in the dungeon. Mm. Are they getting too cocky? In the manhwa, there was there was almost comically too much emphasis put on okay. the party members. It was too obvious. Constantly showing them with red eyes, and they're looking over. Okay, the red eyes didn't happen until the very end, right? Because because as soon as they betrayed us, suddenly they got the red eyes coming. It's like, yeah, they're bad. But I guess in the web too, they immediately did that. That's hilarious. Red. <laughs> and, uh, and, song, okay, and they're okay. looking over at yo, and they're like, oh yeah, these guys. <laughs> These are, these are bad guys. Yeah. And the entire time they're giving that analogy of the lizard and the tail and getting rid of it and all that kind of stuff. So I kind of like how the anime handled it more. I, okay. I know that might be a controversial for some people. I think I like how the anime handled it because... Anime dub, let's go! I do think that's a bit too cheesy. I hate this idea of making it overly obvious that these dudes are bad dudes. Yeah. Um, rather than it be a thing of, yes, these guys are going to play on an act that they're, you know, doing good. Yes, that technically goes against Song, who has the ability to – has high, high perception mm-hmm. that he should see that. His perception ability should allow him to see that these guys are not not good. <laughs> um, but anyways, yes, Song notes the insects coming down, warns everybody. They take it all down. 
Guy Thinks song for kind of pointing that out. If it was too late, it would have been bad. All that stuff as they keep traveling into it, ends up again giving Yo a little bit of a- Oh, and I guess the insects having like a different bite marks they made sure to point out that, hey, like what are these other injuries from the ants? These are sort marks. I'm like, isn't that Sung Jimu kicking the, the, the grasshoppers? It's like, no, no, no. I guess those were marks from the spider? Warning there that, you know, be careful. <laughs> I like how he asked, where'd you get your gear from? My dad. Yeah, be careful. I, I think it might be a thing of trying to get a sense from him, you know, how how'd you get the gear, if you're experienced or not. Money. Was, I mean, the entire thing was Song kind of bestowing upon him a lot of the knowledge that he has of the dungeon. And right, he was explaining, like, the different types of, like, the there's the mana stone, the essence stones, the glow stones, the strength of the gates not proportional to the size. There's a lot of stuff like that he was telling him. It's a cool way for us to learn as well. He's got a new rookie. He's helping out the rookie. Yeah. We get a little more insight into the dungeons and everything, like the walls and how they're usually caked with gems, which might indicate the idea that all the gems are at the boss room. I didn't think about that until now. But yes, they eventually get to the boss room, and there's a ton of gems there and lots of money. And that's where mm, we get the, one billion. the greed creeps in. They indicate that uh, Huang, the, the leader, he possibly had a brother that he seemingly... Yes, Huang Dong Su, a younger brother that apparently is better than him based on his dialogue. And it's like, I will catch up to you or something. It's like, I have my own way of doing things too. So it's like immediately, okay, they were already talking about there's only seven Korean S-rank hunters. Could Huang Dong Su potentially, potentially be an S-rank hunter like that? And if so, if the outcome after the spider battle because Huang Dong Suk is going to come back in with the boys. They're going to see Jin Wu survive. And then they're going to, are they going to evenly share the loot? I don't know. This greedy motherfucker tried to pull a quick one on us. And if we end up getting into confrontation with the older brother, is there a potential that this is setting up for future arcs with the little brother? I'm just saying, I think it's kind of forming that way. In the shadow of, like he's been doing this whole raiding. He's been waiting for that moment that he strikes it big and he could buy a big you know, raid party or strike party, and then they can he can prove it to his brother that he's yeah. got what it, his mate. So it seems like he's lived his whole life being under somebody's shadow. That's why he's... <laughs> Feels bad. Living under the shadow of your little brother. No, it's... I mean, living under the shadow of anybody sucks, but, you know, it's the big bro is getting fucked by the little bro. It's like, I'm sure there's some side keys that playing along with that. It's like, you know, the big bro should be the leader and the little bro should be following... Any, anyways, you know what I mean. Jerk, <laughs> seemingly. But yes, that's when... Yo, Jong Ho, yo, he brings up the fact of the contract. Again, I thought that was really cool. He's like, he he obviously knew, you know, he probably signed this contract. They're talking about, you know, splitting it up amongst a certain amount of people. It seemed like the number of people in the party was different than in the, the Manwa, which was a little bit weird. But it's yeah, he, here. he points out, yeah, it needs to be to everybody, including Song. So the guy's like, yeah, sure, <laughs> right? But he got such a fake smile. It's the smile where you just like close your eyes and you smile. It's like, mm -mm, mm -mm, this guy lying. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, we're going to split it up. By the way, for sure, we'll be right back. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, it just happened. We forgot all our pickaxes, even though technically Sung Jin Mu does have a pickaxe in his bag right now. Oh, yeah, you guys, you guys just stay here. Oh, yeah, you're newbies. You're a completely new dungeon hunter, uh, Jin Ho. And Jin Mu, this is your first C rank dungeon, right? So... Yeah, don't trust us. Just, just trust us. You, you guys will be fine. Just stay in this boss room while we leave. And potentially you guys might die, but we can steal your loot. These fucking scammers. Like, gosh, dang, is, is it that obvious? Is it that obvious? I think at that point it was pretty obvious. Like, yeah. we're just going to... We're gonna yeah. go get the stuff. <laughs> the biggest, fakest fucking smile. Even they're like, oops, I forgot the gear. Oh, how could you forget the gear again? Here, let me just go back to my car and pick that up. Like, come on. They've done this shit over and over. It's fucking rehearsed. Like, literally, Sung is walking around with pickaxes sticking out the back of his backpack. Yeah, he you're has talking, it. You're talking about you need more equipment. Well, I guess those pickaxes are just gonna be for us next episode when we loot it all, right? Hopefully, we don't give any to Hwang Dong Suk. Fuck that guy. Uh, but yeah, it was all ruse to, for some reason, Song and Yo stay in the room. I don't know why they would, but yeah, they trap him in there. And Fida comes down, and it's time to fight. And Song once again remembers that moment inside that double dungeon and the how statue. that was so much more difficult than this one. So I can. I think it's really cool that he keeps kind of remembering that difficulty. And compared to everything else, it's nothing. So it's like a great, it's called anchoring and basically marketing. So basically when you go to a Costco, when you go to like a, like a, a big shop like Costco, the first thing you see when you enter the shop is a bunch of TVs, computers, iPads, expensive tech, expensive materials that are high price. And you know what that does? It sets a point, a number 
anchors into your brain that holy shit big numbers and then if you move beyond that you see smaller numbers so suddenly even if these pair of shirts or other things are relatively higher cost than everything else because you've been anchored to that initial number it seems a lot less so in this case if you kind of apply that i guess the anchor is the statue the relative fear that he felt and compared to everything else it's like nothing to him but it's juhi just like gets ptsd and gets kind of just like shrinks back while sung jimu kind of like uses this as motivation can obviously take this on so he steps out there with the with the fang from the the snake so that'll be our first seeing on how right we're gonna finally use kasuka's dagger well that thing works I, i'm assuming that it, it it's as it's a it's a c-rank dungeon but we don't really have a sense of what the dungeon boss was in the yeah. secret dungeon that he did and like um no nameplate either because it's not an instance dungeon so actual gate monsters we can't really perceive how strong they are maybe the perception would be able to tell us a little bit more but it, yeah so it'll be curious to see how how strong sung is to this is going to be basically a test if he can solo a c rank boss mm -hmm. that's a, a massive thing because yeah. that makes him even more powerful than c rank that's going to make him at least a b rank at True, because it's a boss. This is something that you shouldn't be soloing. It's a group effort. As a hunter, because normally you would think you're going to need a, C, a a decent group of at least 10 people mm -hmm. of C or D rank in order to beat a C rank boss. So, again, we'll be really interested to kind of see that. I was kind of hoping that he would kind of go out there having Yol be basically a tank while he fights, but it seems like he just wants to solo it, which makes well, because... Jin Ho might do. I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe he'll kind of help us out. Maybe, or he'll just kind of sit back in awe. I'm like, oh my god, big bro, you're cracked. Because Yo is gonna be completely an unknown. He just started. You don't even know if. He... Am I crazy, or is Mr. Otaku Spirit calling Mr. Jin Ho Yo? And is that a different name? Is that his surname? I thought his name was just Jin Ho. Unless his full name is Yor Jin Ho. I don't know why I keep saying Yor. He has the ability to... Yes, he has a lot of good gear. Song even pointed out the idea that his gear is making up for his lack of skill. But, I mean, if he, he barely took down the, a random s insect... I did he's it He's not going to take on a boss. Anyways, that's uh, my thoughts on episode 5 of Soul Leveling. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did... Y'all know what to do. Please go give Mr. Otaku's spirit a sub. Like his videos if you did. This episode was fantastic. I think it sets up... As a setup, setup episode, it kind of gets us really hyped for the next episode because there's two parts, there's two pop-off moments. Just killing the spider isn't enough. What I'm most interested in is the conflict between the humans as Huang Dong Suk opens up the boss room after we fought the spider and discovers that we're still alive. What's gonna happen? That's just gonna be super spicy.